Hello everyone, I'm Noelia Lopez. I work for Tilting Point. We have, uh, we're a publisher, so we have different kind of games from very casual to more hardcore mid-core. Uh, some of them are like Warhammer, SpongeBob, like maybe you heard about them. So what I want to talk here is about mostly how to monetize in upper, uh, games that are more mid-core, hardcore, because I know Gal said yesterday is like 5% of the users will be paying. I'm more pessimistic. I think it's less than 3%. Like I have like this graph where you have like the, the process. Like I'm covering mid-core and hardcore. I will be using the same term for both, but it's uh, on these lines. And what I want to cover here is um, that actually the other 97% of the users are not paying, so how do you want to monetize that, um, those users? So what we are going to be covering today is understanding the pillars of who is important in the game and how to understand them for the ad placements, then how to plan the ad monetization for those kind of games, and of course the conclusion. So in order to understand the main pillars, we have the three main uh, important people in, in our games, right? Is the player, where they are going to be spending the time in the game. They have different kind of motivations. We were covering this yesterday with Anna as well. Then you have the developers, which could be also the publisher, where your intention is that you have high retention, you want to increase the LTV, you want to increase the revenue, of course, but also you care about the users, so you want it to make playable, engaging, and stuff. And of course, the advertisers, that they want to use the impressions that you have in your game to also like earn their part. Um, so when we are talking about hardcore games, uh, you want to in have the users that are engaged, so when they are playing, they are investing a lot of time. We are talking about hardcore games where mostly, or most of times are related with IPs. So it has a lore, it has some background story where you have a lot of engagement with the game, you invest a lot of hours, they have really long tutorials. So they don't usually spend this time in other games. So all the time they have, they're using in that one. So this is very important for them, uh, which translates into having a high engagement, high retention, and of course, high revenue, because they're putting a lot of effort in there. And of course, because you have these users, it's also valuable for the advertisers to have them, because they may do purchases in other games. Um, at the same time, because we are saying they are hardcore and they invest a lot of time, they are, have a strong belief of belonging. So uh, having the community is very important for them. But this is also something you want to take into account when you are doing changes in the game, because you may need to inform when you are doing A-B tests, it's also important because you may find a situation where you have two groups, one group sees something, the other group doesn't see it, and it's like, why it's different? And they will talk in the community. So it's very important that you also expressing those changes or what you are doing so they know it's happening and it may happen in the future like as a long thing. So uh, having this, it's very important to inform. And also, um, the more they enjoy it, the more they pay. Um, so it's important that you give a good flow, that you create a good engagement game so they stick the longest. Uh, but also, it's very important how to place the ad placements in a way that it doesn't affect this uh, path for the user. So uh, one thing I hear a lot, and some of you may not believe this is true, but I keep hearing it, is like, well, if I put ads in the game, the paying users will churn, or like they will leave to another game, or the, uh, I will be keeping users that are low quality because they like to see ads, or it's going to cannibalize in app purchases, and it's not good going to be well seen in the game, it's going to decrease the quality of the game, and that's simply not true. If this is happening, I'm sorry, you are not doing well your job. <laughs> you are not implementing the right ad placements. So um, something I want you to keep in mind, this is very, very high level. It's not accurate for everything, but just to give a sense of where are we standing. We are talking about the mid-core, hardcore games have a really strong engagement, have high community sensitivity. They are very, uh, they have the strongest uh, paying users. Uh, the game development takes longer because it's a long game, it requires a lot of investment, so the, also the product development is longer, but the resistance is high. 
there's also this mentality, like, I don't want to see ads, but it's just because you didn't find the right one. So now we are going to go, like, how to implement these ad placements in a way that those users don't complain. Um, so first of all, I want to make sure that it's clear that there is a roadmap. All product managers have this roadmap in map. I'm trying to reduce it and to put it in categories to make it easier to understand. So there is the prototyping phase where you are testing a lot. And usually in this phase, you don't want to put ads because, oh my god, like I, I need to test other cool things and I don't want to invest time in the ads. Then you have the soft launch where you are testing stuff. And then the global launch, where I'm talking is this period where it's uh, all the features are going live. And the live ops is just a way of saying it's the survival of the game. So you already have the big launch, and you are just having live operations or some small events. You're maintaining the game. So just to, under to put everyone on the same page with the namings. So when it comes to the roadmap, of course, in the prototyping phase, you are doing the market research. So um, we already covered that in previous sessions, so I don't want to spend too much time in this, but you will be playing other games, trying to understand what they have. You will find they don't have that many ad placements, um, <laughs> but you will actually analyze that then to prioritize. So it's very important to understand how those placements may impact your game, how much revenue increase they will increase, and then prioritize which ones you will release first. Of course, it's hard to, sometimes to convince the, the product manager or the developer to implement these ad placements. So of course, having numbers saying like, this is the best placement because it gives you more revenue should be the first one to go live. And then the conceptualization is, I found a lot of times that you suggest a placement and they say like, we don't have a space in the UI, uh, it doesn't fit, we are not putting it. So what I'm talking here is that you keep in mind you would like to have a placement there so they don't stuff it with other stuff and leave a space for that ad placement. So I'm not talking about implementing them, just thinking and prepare for them so you can put it then in the soft launch phase. In the soft launch phase, I have like three different stages. So you will be integrating the ad placements we were talking before. Uh, you will add some ad networks and the mediation platform. I usually prefer to prioritize fill rate over quality. So I'm not pushing for CPMs. I'm not doing a waterfall that is very complex because usually you will be doing the soft launch in Philippines or in countries where the traffic is not that much, uh, there is not that many impressions. So you want to make sure you have fill rate so you understand the engagement, the impressions per day, you and your fill rate is good. And then you will be also testing the most challenging ads. You may sometimes propose an ad placement that you may think it's good, but you have this feeling that it may cannibalize in app purchases or it may affect retention. So now it's the moment to try this before going live, right? Um, so playing with that, playing with the reward that you want to give, like maybe you started giving 10 gems and now you want to give three, or it's a booster of 10 seconds and now you think it's better to give seven. Uh, so this is the moment to do that. And your goal, as I said before, is like the fill rate, uh, try to find the right balance between the in-app and, ad and ads, so you have the highest revenue possible, and keep testing, of course, in the later phases of the, of the pro product. Um, so when it comes to hardcore, and when we are talking about integrating ads, most of the time I'm talking about rewarded videos and offer wall. I usually don't recommend interstitials or banners in this kind of placements, even less uh, the native ads, mostly because those games tend to be uh, more, like Warhammer is old, like uh, these uh, antique features, so if you put an ad placement like it looks like a, <laughs> a billboard, it may not look good, so it's just like you don't want to disrupt the user. Um, you will choose the best performing networks. This is something you will be testing. I don't want to call out names. You all know like who are the best networks for your games, but it's a moment to try it as well. Um, as I said before, testing the ads, in this case, will be the different rewarded videos, like where to place them, what's the best moment, when you need to call it, how many rewards you want to give, what's the amount, and all the different situations. And of course, the goal is to avoid the in-app cannibalization and to increase the LTV. So when we are going global, one thing I recommend, and this is something now <laughs> promotion items has, is the ad placement split. So um, you can actually see the engagement of each individual ad placement. You can monitor the ads per DAU, the ads per DAO, so you can actually see which ones perform best. Um, 
this is how I would prepare a waterfall in case some of you didn't see one. So you will have like the beading on top with some CPMs and you have the waterfall, you may repeat some of them. And the goal is to have a 95% uh, fill rate. So when I'm talking about fill rate, I see sometimes is with the beading, you are asking too many requests, but it's basically the opportunity of serving an impression versus the impressions you serve. So you want to have as maximum as possible so your users always have an opportunity opportunity to see an ad. Um, so in the hardcore games where I feel and what we've been seeing in Tilting Point is the ad engagement rate is like around 60%. Of course, the more the better. But this is an average I've been seeing. The ad spread out usually is around zero to three. They don't see that many ads, but a lot of people see ads. So this is already good. And when it comes to the ad revenue, it's 15% top, what I've seen. But 15%, considering that these are heavy monetized games, it's not, uh, it's not few. It's quite a lot of money. So it's something to keep in mind because it's an incremental for you. So um, some examples that work for us, like these are examples of Warhammer, Terra Genesis, and Star Trek in our games. Um, we are delivering uh, hard currency. This is just like some welcome package that you have uh, next to the shop. So at the beginning, you will have a small amount because it's balanced in a way that you have a booster to keep you going and to start your day uh, on the session. But then the more you progress, the higher the, the gems you get because, of course, you need more. So 20 gems or 10 gems, it's not that useful. And it just helps you to get engaged uh, during that session and you stay longer. Um, the offer wall is a placement. I work very well on this kind of placements because it's very related with the in-app purchases. You are just saving the, the Google and Apple uh, purchase because it's considered an ad. So this is another way to give the same opportunity to non-paying users to experiment with your game. We haven't seen any decrease in retention. We actually had a game, now I'm not able to remember the name, but where we tested it, and actually the engagement increased when we put the offer wall. So that theory that if you put the offer wall, they will leave to another game, it didn't work for us. Uh, it's actually best, so we are trying to put it in these kind of games um, to give similar experience. Um, with the missions is another way of putting it. You have different ways of having the missions. Is either refreshing the, the mission because you don't like it, or maybe having a vision, mission of seeing an ad, or um, like just seeing ads in general by default. There are different ways of approaching this, and you give a small reward or um, a booster or whatever it fits for your game. Of course, every game is different, so I cannot give a specific of <laughs> what will work for all of you. Uh, but one of the boosters that could work is like uh, speed time. So in Terra Genesis, uh, it's quite a slow game. So from time to time, you get a boost like speed up the process of one hour or 15 minutes. So this gives you the time, because you cannot buy this in the shop, of accelerating your session and to be able to do more stuff uh, in the game. So this is a good feature because it's not in the in-app in the shop, and you can actually have this for in-app purchases uh, for payers and non-payers. So it's uh, a good one. And the lucky wheel is just like very casino style where you have like some rewards, like you may have cards, you may have uh, different items, and you can spin per day, and then the next ones are paid. Uh, you can play like if you want to have one, you want to have two for an ad, and or to refresh what it's in the in the shop. There are different ways of approaching this, but those are. Um, placements that give you the option. If you want to do it, you do it. If you don't want to do it, you don't do it. So it's not disruptive with the game, and those usually work very well. Uh, I didn't add it here, but um, one placement I find interesting, which is not a placement, is that uh, those that are scared for in-app purchases or payers that are leaving, uh, one thing you could do is like in the in-app packages, you can give tickets. So if you are a paying user, you can have like the video, you pay with this ticket that you are delivering and you are receiving the reward in exchange of that ticket. So basically you are getting the reward without seeing the ad, but because you paid. It's a way of also incentivizing users to pay because they are not seeing the ad, but they are still getting the reward. Um, but those are just suggestions, it's up to you. 
and of course the live operations. Like once you are live, uh, sometimes you may come with an amazing idea, an amazing live event. Every a player will start playing this secondary event or whatever, and then the core loop disappears and you don't have ads. So it's important that when you are planning these um, live ops or like these events, you keep in mind how to implement those ad placements so you don't leave those users aside and they can keep participating. They can even be an opportunity to increase your revenues, like imagine you have an event that goes with leaderboards, so you could potentially open up for the non-paying users with ads, like the tickets to enter the event is with an ad, so they get into these um, leaderboards, so paying users may be scared of losing the reward of being in the top of the leaderboard so because you have more non-paying users entering in there. So it's a way of incentivizing uh, the challenges and the competition and paying users actually investing more to be upper in the leaderboard. So there are different strategies that you can implement. So they will be the, what would you do with the live operations? So the conclusion basically is that you have to keep the ads in mind for the whole process and the whole roadmap of the game. You need to keep A-B testing placements, like trying everything you can, as more as you test as you possible, but of course, keep in mind your users and what they want, so inform them always, and constantly monitor the performance, because what worked yesterday may not work today, and you may see a drop, so you need to understand what's going on, how to monitor it. So thank you very much. Now I give the mic to Samantha.